Hey everyone, The Artificial Trainer here. Welcome in, welcome back to my channel. This is a long-awaited functionality in AI generation. There's some closed models that do a decent job. There was Vase and Phantom, a merge that did a pretty decent job, but nothing that really got the job done really well. So today we're gonna to be talking reference to video with pose video. You don't have to train a LoRa and use a control net to set your reference image. Now it's just put a picture in, put a video in that you wanna drive against it and you can get infinitely long videos super easily. So first let's go through the install. You can just install this through the custom node in the custom nodes manager. It's just KJ's one video wrapper and then also KJ nodes are needed. If you already have them installed, make sure that they're on the nightly version. So click this, make sure you're not on stable, make sure on nightly, and then you can go into the custom nodes manager and update hit the try update button and that should get you to the latest. If you have any trouble with that, head to the Discord, always happy to help. And also while you're checking out the Discord in the description, hit that like and subscribe button. If you wanna see how to use these models first, I'm typically one of the first ones to have content out about new models. So subscribe so you don't miss any news and not just news, but how do you actually use it? All right, so next let's head to the model downloads. So model downloads are in the description below. I have them in a text file here. They should match up. Uh, while you're downloading those models, just watch the video. This video especially has some, you know, things that you have to do in the workflow that aren't just click the button and let it run. So download the models, watch the video, and then come back and plug the models into your Comfy UI folder and then you'll be good to go. All right, so first thing, uh, I'll just show you you know, a couple of these and then you can go in and do the rest of them yourself. It's pretty, pretty clear. So we're in the Comfy UI folder. It says to go to your models folder next. And then we'll look at diffusion models because the we're using scaled models here, which add a little bit of nuance. So for the scaled models, there's two versions. You want to look at this FPA E4 and FPA E5. So if you are running on a 4000 series or greater, so that's like a 4090, 5090, you know, 5070, whatever, then you're going to want to use the FPA E4. If you're on a 30 series or lower, you're going to want to use the FPA E5. And then I also have a step in here for improving the quality of the generation and I'm using WAN 2.2 low model for that and it's the same thing that applies so if you're on 4000 series or newer use the FPA E4 if you're on 3000 series or older use the FPA E5 so you can see WAN 2.2 animate my model is right here I'm running on 5090 so I did download the FPA E4 there's also uh, Flux Crea in here. If you want to generate your own images or you have images already, there's no need to download these models. I'm just giving this as a reference image generator workflow. If you download the Flux Crea workflow from here, this is the workflow. It's super simple. I just generated a photo of an anime woman. I actually haven't tried anime yet, so we'll try it out live on here and we'll see how it does. All right, so just run that with whatever prompt you want, and it will give you a reference video or a reference image to use in our video generation. On my Patreon, I provided a few reference videos that you can use. You can obviously select your own or go find your own video if you want. I just figured um, if you wanted to try out exactly what I was doing, then you can use those. All right, so I have a reference image that I generated here. It's just a simple one of this blonde woman. And it's a 61 frame video, so I set my frame count to 61. And then in a in the next generation, I'll show you if you wanna do longer videos, how you do that. So we'll, let's run through the workflow in the simple case first, and then I'll show you how to do the longer videos. All right, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is bypass the sampling section here, and then just run the workflow until you see this screen pop up here. So this won't be on by default for you, but it will pop up on your first run. 
and it should pop up with the first frame. So the way that SAM two points editor works is shift left click adds a green node, shift right click adds a red node. Green nodes are where you want to mask. So this is essentially just gonna mask our video. And then red nodes are where you don't want to mask. All right, so that should be plenty of mask for me. This doesn't require super pr precise masking, which is nice. So just run that. So there's our mask. You can see it's it kind of makes it, um, it doesn't have to be super smooth and precise, which is really nice because if it had to be super smooth and precise, sometimes you get ghosting. And then one other thing to note, if you don't get this super zoomed in look at your video, it's probably not going to generate very well and you'll need to select a different reference video. If you are getting this zoomed in look, you're probably good to go with whatever video you chose. All right, so we can turn our sampling back on. So I just highlighted it all and then I hit this um, circle with a line through it. That's the bypass toggle. That's actually somewhat new. So if you don't have the newest comfy nodes, you can also right click or sorry, the newest comfy UI, you can also right click and hit uh, bypass group nodes. Same thing. All right, and then our frame window size will stay 81. This allows for context windows and it does a really good job color matching as well. You can turn color matching on, but it already color matches pretty well without it. And we actually don't need this context options, so you can either bypass it or you can just delete the node. And then from there, make sure all your models are set up correctly. So if you downloaded them exactly how I did, everything should work pretty well. The only trouble is this is this does tend to be pretty VRAM hungry. So if you have low amounts of VRAM, you may run into some issues. There are some GGuff models I saw, I saw out there, so you might need to use one of those. All right, and that should be it. So let's give it a try here. I'm going to bypass the improved quality for now, and then I'll show that to you once we get through the first generation. And while we were doing this part, you technically don't have to bypass the sampler if you don't want to. You could also just run it, wait for this to pop up, and then hit the cancel current run. I just find that bypassing it's a little cleaner to for explaining it, but I typically just run it until that pops up and then cancel it. All right, so I did get a tensor mismatch error, and that is because I have a frame load cap of 61 and my window size is 81. So you wanna make sure that if you have less than 81 frames, that your window size matches your video size or your video batch size, so the amount of frames. And the frame count has to match the equation n times four plus one equals frames. So basically like five, nine, 13, 17, 21 frames. So make sure your input video has a frame count that matches up with that. All right, so there is our generation, really solid. Now we can improve the quality a little bit more. If I turn on these improved quality nodes, this uses ultimate SD upscale with a low denoise pass just to give us a little bit better picture quality. And you can see with interpolation, we get slightly smoother results as well. So you can see a pretty dramatic increase in realism between the two, these two, right? The skin looks a lot better. The pants look less, you know, AI-ish. So the upscale pass definitely makes a difference, but it takes a long time, right? This is like, a, I think it was about eight minutes to upscale it. You might prefer to, you know, break the upscale pass out into a separate workflow, do all your generations and then pass them in as a batch so you don't have to wait at the end of every generation. All right, so now let's do a long generation. So. I'm gonna change the height and width to 832 by 480 just so that we don't have to wait as long. And then I have a longer video here. And we're gonna do 181 frames. So I wanna change my context window to 81 frames, just cause 81 frames is generally what these are trained on. So it works best at 81 frames. And then we're, we have to do the same thing where we mask out the character. So I'm gonna hit new canvas. That'll clear all of the dots. And then I'm gonna run this and then wait for this frame to populate and then I'm gonna stop running it. 
All right, so we have our frame here. And again, shift left click creates green dots, shift right click creates red dots. And then I'm gonna try a different character here. So let's try this dog, dog man, I guess. And then I'm gonna say a human with a dog head dancing. All right, and then let's give this one a try. All right, good mask. And then we get the close up of the face, which is key. And now it's gonna run as many times as it needs to in order to get to 181 frames. And here is our long video. It's a bit, um, you know, quality isn't great here. This is my first time trying it with a non-human subject. So maybe it, it really prefers human subjects, but you can see that's much more than 81 frames and there's barely any color shift between frames. At the beginning, I have a better example of this long generation on a human subject. All right, so now let's try one more with an anime subject and a vertical video. So I'm gonna do 832 by 40 for my height and width. And then I'm gonna put an anime character in as my reference image. And then in my prompt, I'm just gonna say an anime woman dancing in a dress and then we're gonna run it until this box populates sorry one thing first i'm gonna set the frame load cap to 61 just to get a faster generation and then let's run it until this screen populates all right and then same thing green is mask red is don't mask and then we run it all right and you can see our mask came out nicely we got the zoomed in image of the person's face, which we needed. And now it's running through the generation. Oh, and I made one mistake. Since it's only a 61 frame video, we need to change the frame window size to 61. Hopefully that's fixed in the future and you won't have to modify that if the video is less than 81 frames. All right, and here's anime. So not an amazing generation here. One thing I've, I've noticed is that like if the face shapes don't match super well, you won't get um, great likeness of your reference image. And that's really the only limiter. It's not really like vase where if the whole body didn't match up well, you wouldn't get good likeness. Now it's really, you just need to have a decently similar face. Doesn't have to be perfectly similar, but decently similar face. And 1280 by 720 definitely gives you better quality. It works at 832 by 480, but for something like production quality, you're gonna want 1280 and then probably upscale it with ultimate SD upscale. I have the no upscale node in there right now, but you can also use the regular upscale node to upscale it. It's just gonna take about 20 minutes to actually upscale the video. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy this model. There's def definitely gonna be native ComfyUI nodes coming for this shortly. So. Once those are out, I'll also make a video on how to use the native version. If you have any trouble getting this up and running, head to the Discord. Tons of people are definitely gonna be trying this out over the weekend. So head over there and find some help if you need it. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll talk to you again in the next one.